So we're going to measure how much force it takes to hold our 172R up in a out of trim situation. We're, we're going to trim full nose down, we'll release back pressure, and we're going to see what we get as far as our read. Pete, how's the how's it feeling on your arms right now? Pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're having to hold a lot of force, right? Yep. So I think that's full. Okay. And if you were to let go right now, we're going straight down, right? Yeah. You're going to gently release your grip on the yoke, and I'm going to hold it with our force measurement tool here to see to see what we get. Okay. Sure. All right. All right, I'm starting to pull. All right, I'm off the yoke. Okay. And I'm holding force. And there, and I don't know if you can Good take a look at that reading there. It's over, to the over 50 pounds at times. And so that's a lot. That's a lot of force. Perfect. And you'll see, as I start to release, right, we would be going down in a hurry. All right, Vito, you got controls. You got controls. So it can be a very serious situation, right? SCFIs and Vito is a CFI applicant. About by the time you watch this video, we'll probably be a CFI. That's why we need. That's why we teach this. It's just because it's a real world situation. It's amazing to think that a piece of metal that's so small on the elevator can have such a drastic impact on flight control. As pilots, we love trim. It makes flying the airplane so much easier. For today, we're just going to be talking about elevator trim. We get the airplane into the desired pitch, power, and configuration that we want. We trim the airplane, and it should probably be hands-off flying. I didn't know this thing had an autopilot. I mean, you're just like, got it trimmed out perfectly. <laughs> there's tons of videos and lessons on exactly how trim works, and we won't go into that. And I know there's lots of different types of trim systems and configurations. But for our discussion, let's just talk about the trim tab on the 172. There are several different parts of flight that can be extremely dangerous with the wrong trim configuration. Let's start with the danger on the ground first. There have been cases where a plane came out of maintenance and the trim was set up in reverse. If you trim full nose up, the trim tab itself will be in the down position. As part of your pre-flight, you should ensure that the trim tab is actually moving where you want it to. Another warning area for trim usage is the rejected landing or go around. I'd like to declare a go around, so go ahead and do that. The go around is probably, or the rejected landing, is probably one of the least practiced maneuvers in aviation, yet it still bites people when they do it. In our 172, it's pretty, pretty, like I said, it's pretty easy, but if you're in, you know, something with a big engine like a Bonanza or Cirrus, you got all those left turning tendencies, that power coming in, people have been known to let that get away from them, especially like we practiced earlier with that out of trim situation. Yeah. Lots of trim, lots of power, like that's a recipe, a drastic pitch up and a stall, yaw, spin it into the ground scenario. And since it seems to take me 800 years to make each of these videos, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe for the effort. Appreciate it. Some airplanes have a manual trim system and some airplanes have an electric trim system. And of course we know some airplanes have autopilot as well. And this gets us to another scenario that can be very dangerous. If you manually trim the airplane so far nose up or nose down and the autopilot kicks off, you're going to go straight up or straight down. And at cruise speeds, that could be devastating. Another likely scenario that's happening would be or could be if you have an autopilot and there is, uh, you need to you know, trim manually, but then... The autopilot kicks off, and all of a sudden, you've got all this extra trim in there. Uh, a runaway trim scenario, right? So if we have an electric trim system, and the trim just goes wild, you know, up or down, like we need to be prepared for that. So we're going to measure how much force it takes to hold our 172R up um, in a out-of-trim situation. You're going to hold the pressure that you need to maintain level flight. We're at 4,500 here, and I'll... Our nose down trim. Yeah. Vito, how's the how's it feeling on your arms right now? Pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're having to hold a lot of force, right? Yep. So I think that's full. Okay. And if you were to let go right now, we're going straight down, right? Yeah. You're going to gently release your grip on the yoke, and I'm going to hold it with our um, force measurement tool here to see to see what we get. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. I'm starting to pull. All right. I'm off the yoke. Okay.
And I'm holding force, and, there, and I don't know if you can take a look at that reading there. It's over over 50 pounds at times. And that's a lot. That's a lot of force. And you'll see as I start to release, right? We would be going down in a hurry. So it can be a very serious situation. So over 50 pounds just to hold us in that trim scenario, and we're just for reference, we're you know about 100, 110 knots on the airspeed. We got a trim runaway. We'll bring it over there now. Runaway trim is a danger for airplanes with an electric trim system. We got a trim runaway. Got 4439. 4439, we're in a stalling situation. <sighs> runaway trim is when the electric trim system kicks in and just keeps trimming, either full nose up or full nose down. And that is a very, very serious situation. And that's why it's really important to know your airplane. If you are flying in a plane with an autopilot, when you get in the airplane, one of the things that you need to add to to your check is where are my circuit breakers for the autopilot? Yeah. In a panic situation, if you couldn't find the circuit breakers, what's the next best thing you can do? Right. Turn off your electrical system. Boom. Turn off the master. Yep. Absolutely. You need to know where your circuit breakers are for your electric trim system and your autopilot, and you should be able to access those in no time. Being in a runaway trim situation and not knowing where the circuit breakers are that's probably not going to work out well. But if you are in that situation, there is something you can do to regain control, and that's cut the electrical power to the airplane, turn off the master switch. While that option may not be ideal because now you don't have radios and lights and instrumentation, it is a last resort that you can use and you should use to keep control of the airplane. As an instructor, I see that the one of the most often overlooked items on the after landing checklist is the adjust trim for takeoff line item. If you haven't set your trim before takeoff, you could get an uncommanded nose pitch up or even have to use excessive force to pull the airplane off the ground. Either of those are not good. Flaps up. 3012 transition. Return to Papa. After landing, flaps up strobes. We're going to leave those on. Landing light will turn that off. Taxi light as required. Pitot heat is off. Mixture. We leaned it. Anything else? Trip. Trim. And we know we like to bust myths on this channel. One of the myths going around about trim is on an engine out scenario, you should automatically trim full nose up. And that's just not true. How much trim you need, you're probably going to have to figure out in that moment. It depends on the type of airplane. It depends on the weight, the density altitude, and other factors. And while we're on the topic of engine out scenarios... I did make a video about how to prepare yourself for that last thousand feet in a crash situation. You can watch that here. Fly safe, everyone.